Hi, I'm Dr. Bob Akaziza. Today I'm a board certified facial plastic surgeon. And what I'd like to discuss is uh, this um, case of a very interesting woman who had had multiple previous rhinoplasties uh, and unfortunately had an uh, outcome that was uh, uh, substandard for her. Um, she presented to me after having multiple previous uh, rhinoplasties. Uh, uh, of which one operation uh, she had a uh, foreign body implant which got extruded through her nose and when uh, she presented to me as you could see with the photograph she has an extremely short nose multiple scars in her nose both on the sides and uh, just above her tip really poorly uh, placed nostrils and uh, just irregularity and this is what I would consider a botched uh, rhinoplasty outcome. Uh, there are rhinoplasties that the patients do not receive their ideal outcome, but the nose is still appropriate uh, or it has some uh, irregularities or features that are outstanding. Regardless, they're not botched. Uh, this, unfortunately, is a rhinoplasty outcome that's botched. It's a very small percentage of patients that we see like this. Um, and uh, this was a very challenging case. The most uh, interesting and challenging component of this operation was that she had multiple scars and what we call the skin tissue envelope. The skin that wraps around the cartilage, the bones, was completely decimated. And that presents a very challenging situation for uh, rhinoplasty experts because you can build the cartilage foundation, you can build the bony foundation, but the skin foundation, the skin wrapping the cartilages is very, very important and very difficult to recreate. So for her, what we decided to do was actually a three-stage procedure. And in the first stage, what we did was actually go and try to redo her skin soft tissue envelope. So we did not do any underlying tissue and uh, cartilage work. What we did is through an endonasal approach, uh, we laid some temporalis fascia. Temporalis fascia is a wonderful, wonderful uh, tissue layer that in a sense, if you think about it, it creates a padding. It's like adding an extra layer of cover and blanket. So that uh, temporalis fascia went under her skin and we just laid that there to add some uh, cushion to her skin tissue envelope. We allowed that to heal for a few months then we went back as a secondary stage and rebuilt the entire cartilage framework of her nose utilizing rib cartilage and this is a very common approach for these very difficult multiply previously operated uh, operations so we want to build a framework it's just like a home where you want foundations if you don't have the foundations to a nose the nose will in the long run not look good so we use rib cartilage to build the framework. In some areas, the rib cartilage is solid, but in some areas, we use what we call a dice cartilage in order to allow, again, soft transitions between the bridge and the tip. We wanted to give her more projection, and we also wanted to what we call counter-rotate or lengthen the nose because she had a very, very short nose. So we were able to accomplish that very, very nicely. However, again, because of her significant soft tissue envelope issues, we still had some scarring and some indentations after we were done, after we allowed the area to heal. So we had planned a third stage procedure where we did what we call a non-surgical rhinoplasty. And we used Restylane and fillers to soften and correct the irregularities and this is the final outcome of the procedure and what you see in this final outcome is a nose that is counter rotated and lengthened you have a soft transition between the bridge and the tip you have a appropriately projected tip and you just have an appropriate nose for the patient's face and that's what we want to ultimately achieve